Hi, welcome to Gun Rats. My name is Kieran Robinson and today I feel very privileged to be on this beautiful range on an autumn morning, nice and crisp. And I have two beautiful examples of Ticker rifles with me today. Here in front, this all stainless steel Ticker CTR, CTR standing for Compact Tactical Rifle. And behind it, and we're going to have a closer look at it in a moment, where you can see it a little bit better, I've got the Ticker UPR, Ultimate Precision Rifle. Today they're both topped with Vortex scopes. Absolutely wonderful rifles. Lightweight, but also tactical. What makes it tactical is the 10-shot magazine. It comes standard with Picatinny rails. 24-inch barrels. The barrels are uh, cold hammer-forged barrels, 24 inches in length. They come from the factory already threaded, 5 8 24. Come standard with a thread cap. This one's already been taken off. I've got a suppressor, a silencer on the CTR already and not on the UPR. The UPR we'll shoot today, we'll give it a test um, like this in its current state as it comes from the factory. Both barrels are in 6.5 Creedmoor, very, very popular caliber at the moment for very good reason. Um, tremendous performance, light recoil and great long range potential. The rifles are extremely similar. I'll point out the, the minor differences in a moment. They are minor, but they are significant. Both barrels have a one in eight twist which is absolutely fantastic for a 6.5 caliber rifle. It means you can shoot anything basically from sort of a 105 grain bullet all the way up to a 150 grain bullet, possibly 156. I've used 156 grain bullets in a 1 in 8 twist before and it works perfectly nice for bushveld conditions if you so choose. The CTR, the Compact Tactical Rifle, 24 inch barrel. This particular model is stainless steel. It's also available in normal steel in a blued finish. As said before, 10-shot all-steel magazine. The quality of the magazines is absolutely superb, as is everything on this rifle. Um, the magazine release can be manipulated with your trigger finger from the right, or alternatively with your thumb from the left, making it ambidextrous. Uh, speaking of ambidextrous, these rifles are also available in left-hand versions, which is actually a really nice feature, nice to know. The CTR is in a synthetic stock, um, comes with a standard length of pull, I think it's about 13 and a half inches, but you can buy additional spaces. I've already inserted two here, making this one slightly longer than the UPR, and it's so easy to install. And the same spacer system will also work on the UPR. The triggers on these rifles, always crisp, no matter how heavily set they are, super crisp, like breaking glass. They are just so easy to set the triggers on these rifles. And in most cases, you can set them down to about 1.8, 1.9 pounds, which is more than adequate for pretty much every application that I can think of, from target shooting, gong shooting, and hunting applications. The UPR, this particular model, has actually got a very interesting trigger. It's called a set trigger, which I'll describe in a little bit more detail when we, when we take a closer look at the UPR. Um, the set trigger allows you to push the trigger forward, and in the old days, that would be called a hair trigger. Makes it exceptionally light. The set trigger is really nice for bench rest work, for sighting in and zeroing your scope, for getting all those little things sorted out. But under normal practical circumstances, I'm not too sure I'd actually use it. Um, the trigger as it is standard is absolutely perfect there at about two pounds. And like I said, it breaks beautifully. So there's no creep, nothing. Put your finger on the trigger when you're ready to shoot, squeeze off that shot and it breaks like, like ice. Now, not all the models have a set trigger. Some models are available with the standard trigger. This particular one, and I'm gonna show you the difference in a moment, the rifle is definitely empty. Let's actually take the magazine out and do that little exercise again. Empty. This is its normal configuration, and there your trigger breaks. However, you can, if you want to, if you wish, push the trigger forward. You hear the click. And now we're not talking about pounds. Now we're talking about ounces here. Literally rest your finger on the trigger and it is scary light. I certainly wouldn't use that in any normal application. When you're all excited in the felt and you're hunting, um, man, you are not gonna fire when you want to fire. So rather just leave it in a standard mode, use the set trigger on a bench, nice and safe, and you wanna zero your scope. Another feature that you cannot see is the way that the barrels are floated, the difference between the two. And I'm going to show you with a sheet of paper in a moment. The CTR 
is still making contact with the stock at about this point ahead of the action. On the UPR, there is no contact to the stock all the way up to the action. We'll see in a moment when we fire these two rifles and test them, whether that makes any real wool difference. But psychologically, it's always nice to know that your, your barrel is actually free floated all the way up to the action. I like that. I think it's a fantastic feature. And then another thing that you can't see from this angle, and I'm going to change that in a moment, is that with these rifles, and I found it with the, the, the CTR, I've actually carried the CTR, CTR in the bush a bit myself, and I find that this magazine, which sticks out a little bit, can actually hamper you a little bit when you sling it over your shoulder. There are times when it becomes a little uncomfortable and the magazine goes into the small of your back. Ticker have thought about that with the UPR stock and they have added flush cup mountings on the side of your rifle, which means that you can carry this rifle side on. Instead of having the magazine going into your back, the magazine is flat with your back, which I think is a fantastic feature. So just as an example, he has a little flush cup this is obviously what your sling would fit onto. And the rifle itself has a flush cup fitting over here and once again over here. And that is just really cool. It pops in, it's secure, it will never come out. You have to depress the button and pull her out. Very, very nice feature. Another feature that I really like, and I must tell you, it's one of the few rifles that this has actually worked out on is that she has two sling swivels. The CTR has one sling swivel, this one has two. One in the front and one slightly to the rear. When I put a bipod on, on most rifles I tend to have to take this rear one out. On this rifle, no problem at all, my bipod fits and my sling swivel is still there. Absolutely superb. The UPR comes, as the name suggests, a UPR stock. Um, it's a far more solid stock than the plastic stock that's on the CTR and it has a couple of advantages. It's sort of a crossover between an A3 and an A5 style stock with a vertical pistol grip but still nice and narrow here in the forend. So it's not a big bulky stock. You can still use it for all practical purposes like hunting and carrying in the felt and that. Um, once again the magazine is a 10 shot. These magazines are interchangeable. Spare magazines are available if you require more and five shot magazines are also available. The spacer system that we've got on the CTR will also fit on the UPR. In this case, I haven't got to that yet. It's still stock standard. You'll also notice a massive difference here that this one has an adjustable cheek piece, which is absolutely fantastic because now I can always align my cheek with a scope ir uh, irrespective of what the, the scope height is. And it's very, very simple to adjust. You simply loosen this little knob over here and you can actually feel little click indentations as you lift and lower the cheek piece. A really, really nice feature. Also nice to bear in mind is that when you remove the bolt, you're going to have to depress that all the way so that the bolt can be released. The rifles are extremely similar. They use the same action, the same magazine. In fact, those that have followed our channel would remember that I did a little video on the, um, the, the Ticket uh, TAC A1. The action on this rifle, the trigger on this rifle, the, the bolt on this action, on this action is exactly the same as the A1, just a different stock configuration. So really, all those great characteristics of the TAC A1 are right here, no difference whatsoever. Both bolts are of a tactical nature, and I must tell you, the more I use them, the more I like them. They're not massive, they're not tiny, they just seem to be perfect and just really, really work well. And the actions on these rifles are just so smooth. In fact, when I load around out of the magazine, I sometimes have to lift my bolt handle and just pull it back a little bit just to make sure that I actually did chamber around. Um, the feeling of no ammunition as opposed to loading ammunition feels exactly the same. I mean, it's just frighteningly smooth. It's, the quality of these rifles is just absolutely superb. Right, so both rifles, the CTR and the UPR, are on paper at 100 meters. We're going to be shooting Saku cartridges, factory ammunition, Game Head Pro, 130 grain typical quality hunting ammunition. Um, whatever results we get here today, remember you can always improve with hand loading for your specific rifle. All rifles are slightly different. They prefer a slightly longer jump, a shorter jump. That obviously has a bearing on cartridge overall length. Um, this is factory ammunition. Um, 
Saku and Tika rifles, both belonging to Beretta Holdings Group. Um, Saku claims five shots, consecutive shots, for a sub MOA group, that's basically an inch at 100 meters. Um, Tika, they claim three consecutive shots for sub MOA. What I'm going to try and do is five shots with the Game Head Pros, 130 grain, and we're going to try for sub MOA with five shots with the tickers. Let's give the CTR a bash. We're going to shoot at the left hand side target. Five consecutive shots. Let's give it a go. Of course, a bit of pressure on that last shot. Um, I don't even know if I could hand load ammunition more accurate than that. Um, I've actually had an opportunity to crony these Game Head Pros from Saku. Um, on average, I'm getting out of a typical 24 inch barrel, I'm getting about 2,745, 2,749, call it 50 foot per second. Nice energy, nice trajectory, nice BC, great hunting cartridge. And as can be seen on that target over there, I mean, you just really couldn't ask for more. See it's shooting a little bit right, the wind has picked up a bit, but I can dope that on the scope quite easily. Let's give the uh, UPR a chance and um, see how that performs. Right, I'm, I'm absolutely ecstatic about the group that we just shot. Five rounds, pretty much one ragged hole, 100 meters. That was with the CTR from Ticker. Now we're gonna try Ticker's UPR, Ultimate Precision Rifle. Same exercise, five rounds, and the goal is to shoot sub MOA, but the bar has been set by the CTR, so let's see if we can do pretty much the same thing. Five rounds. Well, I can honestly say there's not much in it. Um, the highest score definitely goes in this case to the CTR, but there really is absolutely nothing in it. Forget about MOA. I mean, we're talking about a quarter MOA, if not better here. Absolutely, absolutely stunning, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and what's really nice about this is it's not a, if, it's a rifle that can be used for so many applications. Um, it's not big, it's not bulky, it's not heavy. Uh, it will be fantastic for sporting purposes. It will be fantastic for hunting purposes. And like I said before, it's really not heavy. Um, I've actually had the opportunity to take the stock off the rifle. The stock weighs absolutely nothing. I unfortunately couldn't weigh it at the time because my scales battery had gone flat, but it really is super, super light and super strong and sturdy and rigid. So from a hunting application, a first set application, bucky hunting, walk and stalk, um, and the fact that you've got these little flush cups and you can, carry, you can carry the rifle across your back without having the magazine digging into you, absolute bonus. Um, what an absolutely wonderful, well thought out platform. And for somebody looking for a rifle that can really do almost everything, this is something I would certainly look at. Previously, we shot a phenomenal group with the Ticker CTR using Saku's Gamehead Pro 130 grain hunting bullets, cartridges. So just for fun, five rounds, got a gong set up at 300 meters. Let's have a little bit of fun. First hit. Second hit. So easy. Five out of five. Absolutely no problem. Such an easy gun to shoot. 
And having said that, the UPR from a bench position, because of the design of the stock, is even easier and more pleasant to shoot. So let's give the UPR a chance and uh, see how she does at 300 meters. So like I said, we're going to give the UPR a bash at 300 meters on a steel plate. Five rounds, Saku Game Air Pro, 130 grain. Uh, five out of five for the CTR, compact tactical rifle. Now we're going to try five rounds, 300 meters, steel. UPR, ultimate precision rifle. And immediately it just sits nicely on the bench. It's, it's really so perfect for a bipod and a little backrest situation like this, this little setup. And I love this thumbs up position that you can do. You can wrap your thumb around if you want to, but this palm swell just lends itself, the vertical grip just lends itself to the thumb up position. Let's give her a try. That's a hit. Two out of two. That's another hit. That's five out of five. I'm so impressed with this rifle. Well, I'm impressed with both rifles. So at the end of the day, it really just boils down to what kind of configuration you like. And of course, you have to pay a little bit more for the better quality stock. But these rifles really do live up to their names. Compact tactical rifle, UPR, ultimate precision rifle. And they can be used for so many different things. Felskid competitions, bench rest competitions, just having fun, hunting, they're not too heavy. Um, it's just such a nice compromise. It doesn't have a light barrel. Um, the profile is still thick enough to fire multiple shots without heating up too quickly. Um, just such a nice stable platform. And for the man that wants to own only one rifle, so that he's got a bit more money to maybe spend on his scope and his mounts and his reloading equipment and that. This is just such a great place to start because you can use this, like I said, for training, for sport shooting, for hunting purposes, walk and stalk, Fursa type, traditional Fursa waiting and stalking type hunting applications. Um, really is an absolutely fantastic rifle. So here we are at the 300 meter mark. Our gong is over here. Not a true reflection of the CTR and the UPR's um, actual accuracy potential. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we fired five rounds with the UPR, five rounds with the CTR, all on the same target. And remember, I wasn't waiting for this gong to be 100% stationary. So every time I was shooting at it, it still had some movement in it. But I think we can all agree that for 10 rounds out of two rifles at 300 meters, that's really nothing to complain about. I'm extremely impressed.